Hey, hey, Tony Gaston here popping in. Now, I apologize about being late today and um, about having this hoodie on today. It was cold in my house uh, while I was coaching. Hold on now, hold on. Okay, something telling me. I don't know if my mic working, my phone acting up today, talking about my accessory might not be working. So, y'all forgive me. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'm going to try to talk loud just in case my mic in front of me isn't working. But we here with an episode of Talks with Tony. We're going to jump right on in. Um, I read the first two words, so we'll go from there. It says, I'm 33, mother of three beautiful girls, work full time. Married a man that has been in my life for seven years. He was the one I would text here and there like a mentor. I confided in him with all my relationship issues. In return, he would give me advice and Bible scriptures. I was coming out of a relationship and noticed I was moving through a spiritual journey. His mind was extraordinary from all the others. He came in sweeping me off my feet. In the past, he would contract women, coach them, listen to their problems, I learned his history. He saw mine. Uh, now, I just read what it said, but it's some typos in there. So we have to put that together. I see my light about to go out. Okay, one of my lights went out. Y'all forgive me on that. Uh, um, in the past, he would contract women coach. He would contract contact women, coach them, listen to their problems. I learned his history. He saw mine. We ended up getting married and dedicated our lives to God and each other. So I felt I expected marriage would be equal, that he would care for my children like I cherish his, that he wouldn't teach me with my history and that we would go to church as a family. The first year was amazing, visiting my parents, going to dinners, celebrations, church, etc., Second year, very different. When I asked why he had changed and we weren't doing the same thing as traveling to my parents together or events, he expressed himself by saying he doesn't like people and we were going to do things his way from now on. He states he did all of that just to make me happy. He points out that he only gives me what I need and not what I want. He's taught me Life is full of lessons, and this world is not as nice as I see it. I'm very emotional. I started to feel like this marriage was more of a contract and not a marriage. We traveled to his parents' home. He inherited, which meant we drifted away from my family. He adopted my youngest daughter like his and commented that my two oldest daughters have their dad. I used to look up to him as a better role model for my girls as a mentor and father figure. He doesn't interact with them now. Before we left, he would help with homework and have open communication. He gets his children every other weekend, buys them food, brings them home, and doesn't acknowledge mine. I'm equal regardless of whose children my home is. I'm, I'm equal regardless of whose children my home is community property sharing. I, I pay all the bills at the household so he can finish paying for school, his truck note, loans, credit cards, child support, etc. He goes to the grocery store and purchases the necessity, comes back and tells me, OK, we are a team. You go buy the snacks for the children and fruits and veggies. I feel like I lost my confidant and myself. At times, I feel he plays mind games with my emotions. Even at times, it seems like he doesn't know how to show emotions. Tony, what am I not seeing here? Is this the devil playing games? If you have to rewrite to make sense, feel free. I gotta go. (sighs) 
What's up, buddy? Going night night. No. Why? Why you turn off my light? Are you still coaching? <laughs> I'm shooting a video. Right now? Yeah. What's going on? Uh, can you play uh two minutes of keep it up? Two minutes of keep it up, keep up the balloon. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You about to go to bed in a little bit? Okay, okay. Hey, y'all. I'll be back. So I'm gonna have to merge these videos together because my son wanna play keep up. He got a balloon that he just slap up in the air and we keep it up in the air. And so it's almost his bedtime. So I'll be back. Finish the rest of this here. I need some time to process anyway. But um, I merge the videos. We'll talk soon. All right, I'm back. My son said two minutes of keep it up, and that really was more like 20 minutes. Of course, y'all didn't have to feel it because I ain't leave the camera running. Now, wouldn't that have been disrespectful if I would have left that camera running? Woo! <laughs> hey, that would have been disrespectful. I, they would put all kind of advertisements in there. But um, this here letter, all right, so we back to the letter. We back to the letter. I'm going to go up a couple sentences just so we'll finish it on out again for y'all who forgot it. I pay all the bills at the household so he can finish paying for school, his truck note, loans, credit cards, child support, etc. He goes to the grocery store and purchases the necessities, comes back and tells me, okay, we are a team. You go buy the snacks for the children and fruits and veggies. I feel like I lost my confidant. Now, see, I don't know if she's saying I lost my confidence or my confidant is spelled I lost my confidant, but I know it's a typo right there. So we'll just say I feel like I lost my confidant and myself. At times, I feel he plays mind games with my emotions. Even at, even at times, it seems like he doesn't know how to show emotions. Tony, what am I not seeing here? Is this the devil playing games? If you have to rewrite to make sense, feel free. Now, this is a Hispanic name, and it make kind of sense because some of this is kind of written like English may be the second language. Um, at least you got an iPhone. It says sent from my iPhone. God bless you. God showed you some favor in your life with that iPhone. No offense to the Android users. God love y'all too. But iPhone send me a check. And so, sister, this right here is just sad. I'm like, my goodness, this sad. So let me tell you what you got here. Let me tell you what you got here. This right here type of man right here, this is like one of the men, like how you say he a life coach and you was moving through a spiritual journey, and in the past, he would contact women, coach them, listen to their problems. I learned his history. He saw mine. This is one of those type of men. See, look, and you say, I confided in him with all my relationship issues. In return, he would give me advice and Bible scriptures. That right there. This is what I try to help y'all understand. See, a lot of times you see these kind of men out here online with they, you know, with their laptop, like I got my laptop and they sitting there in the room with the light on and, and they giving advice, but they ain't married. They ain't married, but they giving you relationship advice and they telling you what you need to do about your relationship. Uh, they're a relationship coach or a relationship speaker, but they ain't got now wife. And they giving you that advice. They creating a fantasy. Because they get off on that. They get off on women thinking that they are a perfect man. They are an amazing man. But they don't have a woman to exemplify that love on. Because doing it and saying it is two totally different things. Any man could sit up and give all the advice in the world. But to live that advice out, that's something totally different. And that's what a lot of women make that mistake of. And I, and I noticed this too. Like, if you go on my Instagram... You'll see 900 and something thousand uh, people on there, right? You go on single, some single relationship coaches and you'll see they over a million. Some might be over 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 million. The reason why is because women know I'm married. 
So I got to get it out the mud. Only the women who got a pure heart is going to follow me. But the men who, you know, parading around as single, a single life coach giving advice, he paints himself as the perfect man and he's available. So now he could get your heart. He could get your money. And then when he got you, he already know because you've been confiding in him. You told him all of your weaknesses. You told him all of your weaknesses. And none of this should have to even be said. But, you know, obviously, if you write in, it's, you know, you can't see it from the outside looking in. And I understand that. But the problem here is, is you should never date your coach, which that's is too late now. You're already in that. But for the other people watching, I want this to benefit y'all. You should never date a friend. If you have a man who is a platonic friend and y'all do not have a romantic interest from the jump, never turn a platonic friend into a romantic lover. Never do that. One out of a thousand times will it work. If you are that one out of a thousand, we do not care to hear from you in the comments. Congratulations. God bless you. We don't want to lead anybody else astray. For the rule of the thumb, okay, rule of thumb, we're going to say, do not turn a platonic friend into a romantic lover. Because a man knows whether he wants you from the jump. And, and if he does want you, he's going to make that known. He ain't gonna play, he's not going to play life coach. He's not going to play mentor. He's not going to do all that. You say you married a man that has been in your life for seven years. He ain't going to be on there in seven years playing the game. And then this is the thing. This man right here, he is all the way wrong because he sat down. He see, he sat down. He see that you 33. So you still young, still a, a, a baby, a spring chicken, a mother of three beautiful girls. And you work full time. He see that you working. You got three kids. That's three kids alone is a full time job. Three kids, three kids is worth being paid more than any job in the world just by having three kids. One kid, really. But you got three and then you got girls. So that means they super articulate. They doing all kind of talking. They telling you about yourself, what they want, what they don't want. I mean, look, girls be talking. You hear me? <laughs> what, mom? <laughs> Child, please. Escuche me, Hutaba Har. Donde vive? I said this is his Spanish last name. Them, them young ladies, they, they giving their mama, they giving you half a sentence in uh, English, half a sentence in Spanish, or other part of it in Spanglish. So you got, you got a handful when you got three girls. And then they finna go through all kind of stuff. Girls go through all kind of stuff. In my personal opinion, it's way harder raising girls than, than boys. I got two boys. I see what parents who raising girls got to go through. That's just too much articulation for me. And, you know, I'd rather a little boy bumping his gums. Now, my son, they very articulate, but it's just low maintenance. And I hear my wife say all the time, she said, I'm, I'm so blessed to have boys because she was like, I am a boy mom. It's a difference. So this man, see, you got three girls. Then, he's a little nasty butt. He's a little nasty butt. Let me, I'm trying to talk proper just in case you do speak another language too. You speak English very well. This is email written very well. But I, when you said, if you have to rewrite to make sense, feel free. Um, you know, I, I know that's saying, you know, what you were saying. Oh, oh, it said the message was clipped, but that message ain't clipped. That's, that's the whole message. So then this is what a little nasty butt do. Your little nasty man prey on you for seven years. Get all your secrets. Now, you said something here. I don't know if it was a typo, but it was profound. I don't know if it was a typo, but you sure said that, though. And if you didn't mean to say that, it read beautiful now. And let me get to what, where you said it at. Woo! You said, you said, I expected marriage would be equal, that he would care for my children like I cherish his. That he wouldn't 
teach me with my history. Woo, 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 woo. I ain't never heard that right there. Woo, woo, chill. That right there. Ooh, that's a word. Oh, my goodness. And that he would go to church as a family. Now, that he wouldn't teach me with my history. Now, I don't know if you meant to say that. But, sister, that's a whole sermon. You hear me? If you're a pastor, that's your next sermon right there. That Jesus won't teach us with our history. Now, see, so now what you said right there to me, I don't know if you meant to say that. But it sounds like what you're saying is that. He throw your past in your face and that he use your past against you. All of the vulnerabilities that you shared with him, the secrets that you shared with him, the mistakes that you made in your past relationships that you told him about, that he throws that in your face and that he makes you feel less than. Oh, you dumb. That's how he make you feel. Oh, you dumb. Oh, you gullible. Oh, you naive. Oh, so you don't know what I know. You don't know what I know because you ain't on my level. Because you, this right here happened to you. That only happened to dummies. So you, you're you not on my level. You don't know what I know. Excuse me. Let, let me share a scripture with you. And then what the man, the man was giving you Bible scripts and then he stopped going to church with you. This man was going to your family. And what he was doing, he luring your family in he getting them to drop hit their guards getting them comfortable he took a whole year to sell it and see that's what a scam artist got to do so because he played that role and see he was love forgive him i'm about to say something disrespectful about the man love forgive him because that ain't it's not a one size fits all uh, but I was about to say he sound fire too, like the other man later wrote in by. But he sound like he got a complex because this man played that role for seven years. And what he did was try to make you lust after him and desire him and try to make you want him and try to make you miserable in your relationship by pointing out all of his perfections and all of his wisdom, and all of his scripture, and he pretended to be everything that your man wasn't. He Every relationship you had been in, you say you confided in him with all your relationship issues. So everything that your men weren't, he pretended to be that man. And the whole goal was so that you would like him, so that you would lust after him. So that you would want him. And he did all of that to lure you in. And then to make it look real. Because he couldn't just flip it on you the day after marriage. He played the role for a whole year. Sister, uh, he played you. Sister, he played you. And now this man, he'll low down. He low down. See, me being a man, I done did some nasty and dirty stuff. And I wouldn't do what this man did. And that right there, that scares me. That scares me. Because I was capable of homicide. Domestic homicide. I was capable of that. And I wouldn't do what he done did. I wouldn't do what this man did. So that scares me. This man right here scares me for you in a relationship. Because you talking about this man going to adopt your youngest daughter. Sister, that's dangerous. He adopt your youngest daughter as his own. And we ain't talking like legality saying he went to the courthouse. I get what you're saying. Maybe he did go to the courthouse. But you say he adopt your youngest daughter as his own. And then he talking about your older two daughters. But you ain't say nobody age in here, sister. That was very important to say that age. But you probably, but you know I probably would have went in on that. So you ain't want to give me that ammo. But then your older two daughters talking about they got their daddy. You know what that says to me as a man? It says that he's a pervert. And it says that he want to adopt your younger daughter because she gullible and naive. He could get little feels in and she won't recognize good touch versus bad touch. He could pick her up and cuff, cuff booty. 
and she won't catch it. While he picking her up, he could swing a finger around and grab some areas and touch areas accidentally and she too young because she need him as a daddy and she think that's love and that happened every single day so when you raising girls and even when you raising boys you got to be careful with the man that you bring in and that's a red flag for a man to say i'm gonna take one of your children i'm gonna accept one of your children and the other two is outcast to me the other two uh i used to help them i ain't helping them no more they got a daddy that right there that's scary and, and you show this here video. No, you don't. Because this man right here, he crazy. No, you don't. He crazy. If you ever get to you another city, you can show them here this video. And listen here. Little punk, you nasty. You nasty and you're a grown boy. And guess what? Y'all here playing these women? Guess what? You're going to have to answer to God. And it's a hot place. It is a hot place for men like you out here seducing these women. And then you're going to get this woman. And you're going to, you, you up there hugging on, feeling on her little daughter. I already know what you're doing. Because I already know the men like you. Boy, you nasty. And then talking about her other two daughters. Oh, they got a dad. You is nasty. And you need help. You need to be in church. Now you're going to stop going to church. You need to be in church. And boy, you're going to burn if you don't change. Do you hear me? I don't care if you don't even believe in H-E-double-L. If it didn't exist, it's getting created right now for you. If it didn't. Because that's nasty what you're doing. And then you're going to take your grown, stinking, musty behind as a man to the grocery store. And buy half of the groceries. Buy half of the groceries. You ought to be punched in your mouth one tooth at a time that you swallow them and choke on them. Man, that is disgusting that you're going to take this woman who was living her life and she come confiding in you. And then you're going to take this woman, manipulate her, get married to her. And this to every man that's like that, that you bumped into this video. You nasty. And boy, look here, I pray God have mercy on you. Because you the type of person that the wrath of God will tell you limb from limb. I pray God have mercy on you, boy. Because you will come within an inch of your life when you out here doing God. Daughters like this as a grown man. Yeah, I admit to being a, a no good man, but I was a boy. I was a boy. I met my wife at 21. I was a boy. You is grown and stank and musty. You hear me? And you doing women like this. Come on now. Nah. And y'all forgive me now. Nah. Y'all forgive me. For all y'all apologists that you want me to talk to, to talk to a grown man like a baby, like a little boy. This ain't this the wrong channel for you. Because he know better than this. He know better than this. And if God gave me authorization, I hit him in his mouth. It's like, man, it it, 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 it me, it's almost like I want to start a vigilante group. And we go around and we just pluck off one toenail at a time. If you of you, once you cross a certain, once you cross the age of 25, you got to have all the sense in the world. It really ain't no excuse for us before that either, from 18 to 25. But I'm trying to give a little bit of grace. I'm trying to get a little bit of, man, you grown. And then you ain't just taking this woman, you taking her and her three kids. So now they got to see her worrying, stressing, crying. And then you take your behind. To the grocery store and buy half of the groceries. And then come home and tell her to go to the grocery store. Ma'am, listen. Got my eyes watered. I ain't crying. I'm mad. But listen. Ma'am, listen. What? Ma'am, do you know how to Google? Do you know how to Google? Okay. You work full time. You know what? You got a job. You got a job. Ma'am, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Ma'am, do you have credit? You need to get you a credit card. You hear me? Get you a credit card. And you get you $3,500 off that credit card. If you ain't got no credit card, then start building your credit. Work on your credit right now. Get you, go get your secure credit card for $200. And charge $20 on it. And then when the statement come, pay that $20. Build your little credit. Get you a credit card. If you got savings because you work full time, put your little savings up. If it got to be $500, $300, $100, $50, $50, if that's going to take too long, you ain't in physical danger because you ain't mentioned nothing about no physical. 
This man here is he 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 doing you he doing you mental and emotional. This right here is a slow burn right here. And this is what I try to tell people like. This is what I try to tell people that yes, verbal abuse and emotional abuse is just as bad as physical, but it's a it, the burn rate is different. Cause see, if if somebody hits you on your temple, your life could be done like that. If somebody do you like this, it may take you years to break all the way down before you feel completely done for. You see what I mean? So it's a, it's still a difference. Abuse is abuse, but it's a difference in the application of it. This coming from a former. You see what I'm saying? Somebody who used to be in this space. So I understand this. It's a difference. And that's what you got to realize is it's all bad. But the way he doing, this right here is slow. He'll kill you slowly. And he'll make you want to do it to yourself and make you blame yourself and feel guilty about it when it was him playing puppet master. And so because you allowed this man to see you moving through a spiritual journey, as you called it, his mind was extraordinary from others. He came in sweeping me off my feet. That sounds like Satan as a man. That ain't that what the, ain't that what the devil do to us? Ain't that what the adversary do? He come in like a thief in the night. He lure us in with sin. And the sin is so seducing. It's so seductive. It gets you in just a little bit at a time. And before you know it, it done cost you more than you can afford to pay. That's what he did. He got you in slowly. Oh, yeah, playboy, I'm on to you. You nasty. And God got something for you. God got something for you. Boy, you better fall on your knees, on your face, and repent. Boy, you better cry out to God. Because, boy, listen here. You do not want to see the wrath of God for how you out here doing women. And not just a woman, but her daughter. Only heaven knows what you done done to her youngest daughter. And I know because I coached the adult version of them young daughters who was being done wrong by a man like you and never get the courage to tell until they 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. I know the men like you. Boy, you nasty. And boy, listen here, it's a hot place for you. You hear me? And even if you repent tonight, you still going to have to reap what you sow. Be ready to pay the price. You ain't finna get away scot-free. Trust me. And listen here, sister, you don't want to be sitting beside them when lightning strike. And I, and that's metaphorical, not lit, but it, 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 people done got struck by lightning. So for this hill clown, it might be literal. It might be literal. People that got struck by lightning, it might be literal. You don't want to be sitting next to him when lightning strike. Metaphorically, hypothetically, proverbially, all of the alleys. You do not want to be next to him when that lightning strike, ma'am. Trust me. You need to start trying to get some distance. And what I'll ask you, do you know how to Google? What I mean by that is when you go on Google and you search Google, um... Foundation to help women relocate. Nine grants and charities that help with moving expenses. That's a boom right there. Charities that help with moving expenses. Grants for housing and moving. List of charities that help with um, money geek. Financial help for women in abusive relationships. So you do Google that a, a few different ways. I'm a bad Googler because I got my country accent. I just word stuff wrong. But if y'all good at Google and you Google something and you see a foundation come up in your area, you know, you could put in the comments what you Google, the phrase you Google. But I done Googled this in different ways before. And it's foundations that pop up that they raise hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. So they got the money when you call them, when you send them an application and you let them know what you're dealing with, that it's some of them that they'll go ahead and pay that first and last month's rent for you to move. And as of right now, this guy, you ain't mentioned nothing about no physical. So when, and that don't mean that's not there, but again, remember, you can live on your knees or you can go out standing up. Either way, we got to go. 
So you have the decision that you make on when and where and how you decide to make a move. And you analyze the situation, you set up the situation, you create a plan of escape. But when you're dealing with somebody that can seduce you like this and trick you into a relationship and he introduce you to his representative. And see, for them seven years, he could just show you this perfect man because he was sleeping with other women. He ain't have to live with you. The reason why he flipped that script on that second year is because now he lost his, his zeal. See, what it is is he get off on being the knight in shining armor. And he gets to be that to unassuming damsels in distress. So when he had to go all the way through with the marriage to prove to you that he was who he said he was, after a year he was done. The, the jig is up, the act is over. And now he's feeling lowly and insignificant because he you're with him every day and your three daughters are around and then he gets his kids every other weekend. He doesn't have the time and the space and the freedom to be the knight in shining armor for 10 different women because he doesn't live alone anymore. So this second year is to break you down emotionally and to weaken you so that you throw your hands up and you quit. But that but so that you feel worthless and useless and that you don't have the energy to uproot your daughters and to move. And so you literally will go home and cook and clean and then you will go get in your bed and then he will go sit in the car or sit in another place in the house and and play knight in shining armor for strange women for other women and then the next thing that's going to happen in year three he will start staying out all night he will be gone for nights at a time and then year four, he will be gone for a week at a time and then two weeks and three weeks. And you still will be paying all the bills. And then he will even cut back on more bills and have you paying those bills. And all because he got you like Bambi, a deer in the headlights while he coming 150 miles an hour in an F-150. And he just, ugh, just take you out. And you so, he will have you so weak and so dependent upon him, so mind warped because as in your words, his mind was extraordinary from all others. See, I understand about being extraordinary. I know a little bit about that. Don't confuse my confidence with arrogance. God will show you who you are. The devil will too. So it's two, it's two sides you could pick. You could pick this side to work for God or you could pick the side he chose to work for Satan. Because see, I could use my mind and my way with words and my way to articulate and the wisdom that was given from God. I could use that to manipulate the draws off of women. And so I used to use my gift to write poetry and to spit game and to have talk game to get women to do what I wanted to do. So I already know what that's like. But I got my wife at 21 and the Lord got me at 23, renewed me, started to work on me. By 25, the Lord had done, done his work in me. The devil had done tripped me up and made me fall a few times. And the Lord picked me up, brushed me off and said, okay, now you finna work for me full time. My boy, I got you. This man right here, he on assignment from Satan. And what he is here to do is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he's going to destroy one woman at a, at a time, but as a full grown, stinking, musky man. That's what he finna do. Destroy you. Destroy your baby girl. Destroy the egos and confidence of your two older girls. Then destroy the other woman he's talking to right now on the phone, playing knight in shining armor. Then he's going to destroy her. Then destroy her kids. Destroy the next woman. He literally on assignment. And see, nobody too big and nobody too small for the adversary. If he got to use a demon like this man here to pluck off one woman at a time, one child at a time, that's what he'll do. Because that's what the adversary set out to do. This man working for principalities and evil and dark forces to ease his way in and do this right here. And see, the reason, now some of y'all said, well, Tony, now how you got all of that from this email? This woman ain't said nothing about he punching her in the eye. This man, any man knows that a man 
who will pick his kids up, get them food, bring his snag tooth kids to the woman, his wife's house, let his kids smack. You know kids don't know how to chew with their mouth closed. I know because I be ready to pull my hair out one by one. The little hair I got left with my six-year-old be chewing. I told him 90 times, son, chew with your mouth closed. He chewed with his mouth closed for two chews. Next thing I know. It's like he ain't ate in, in the whole six years he been living. And this man bringing his snag two kids home. They smacking in front of this woman, three beautiful girls. Her girls sitting there looking at them kids. Catching a slob going out their mouth. Then she got to come home. Her daughter starving. She got to go in there and cook for her daughters. And this old sorry. But see, you know what I want? Because the government might not mess with me if I start the relationship form of Black Panthers. I just watched uh, the uh, Black Messiah, Judas and the Black Messiah, and they had them Black Panthers. And I hit up uh, uh, one of my guys that interviewed me on his podcast years ago, Willie D. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you need to start the Black chap uh, the Black Panthers, and I'll um, do the chapter here in Florida. He said, man, you're trying to get both of us killed. I said, yeah, you're right. I said, you're right. Listen, we'll come up with another plan. But they, the government might not bother with me if I start the, the relationship version of this, the way we start going helmet up and you got to sit there and just get love and relationship lessons with a side of in the nose and just learn how to treat a woman because listen man i don't have no sympathy for men after you cross a certain age i understand when you young and dumb and full of but once you come a certain age and then you ain't just doing it to no woman that's bad enough just do it to a woman but you traumatizing her kid her kid going to be having nightmares about watching your kids smack in their face. And then they going to be growing up. Her daughter going to grow up and could be man haters because they watch your sorry butt come home and then send their mama out in the cold, rain, snow, heat to go get the other half of the groceries. Ma'am, you could do bad by yourself. And matter of fact, you could do better by yourself. I wish I could get a letter that say, hey, work this out. This thing going to work out. But I can't sit here and no lie. Men, come on here. These men right here come on here in the comments. Tony, when are you going to advise somebody to stay together and work it out? When, when it fits. When it fits. I'm not going to force no work it out in no treacherous situation like these. What I look like? Boo boo the fool? Absolutely not. I got the answer to God. I got the answer to God. So yeah, you can stay and try to work it out you want to. But if I know you finna be better off alone, that's what I got to that's what I got to shout. Sister, you'll be better off alone. Do you hear me? This man here will drive you to a early grave that will be induced by stress, by emotional stress. Now he mad with me. Then he, he finna try to find me and square up because he think he know Tai Chi. All right, let's see if that fish can block this lead, this hot lead. You see what I'm saying? He finna be mad with people. I don't care nothing about it because men got the man up. And men, it's time for men to be men. Stop being punks. Stop being grown boys. Like, come on, man. We done had enough time. It's time to get right. It's time to get right. It's time to learn how to treat a woman like a queen. Man, come on now. Come on now. My company paid my wife six figures. And she stayed behind on the emails. And still get paid. And all kind of emails don't be answered. But you know, because she's a queen. So whether she do the work or not, she going to get paid. Because that's my wife. Now, if it's another woman working for the company, oh, man, yeah, we're going to have to write you up. Because I, cause I ain't married to you. <laughs> write up. <laughs> now, if I have to write you up again, you're terminated. But my wife, she going to have a red carpet roll die. Because that's my wife. When you married, 
You got to treat that woman like a queen. You, as a man, you suffer the wrong. You perfect her flaws. You stand in the gap. You grocery shop and buy all the groceries. That's your little raggedy job. You got this woman paying all the bills of the house. And then, oh my goodness. I can't say too much because y'all might start seeing men disappear for days at a time. And you, you, you've you watched the news. John Smith disappeared. He hasn't been around for three days. But there's been text messages of pictures of him missing teeth and missing fingernails from an unknown number that is not traceable. Uh, they say it may be a vigilante group that's out to get a ransom. No, we want a ransom. We're going to return him. We're going to return him. He's just going to be bumping and bruised, but he's going to have 72 hours worth of love and relationship lessons that he's going to be the sweetest, nicest man when them teeth get veneered. That you've ever seen. But it's like, I'm, I'm at the point now, it's unfair for me to say, Lord, touch us. Lord, if us men doing wrong, Lord, touch us. Because now I'm doing right now. So now, so I'd be wrong to say that now. Nah, uh, 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 Scott Free die. I'm doing good. Hey, Lord, touch here. Man ain't doing right. I'd be wrong to say that. But at the same time, it's like, listen, Lord, now come on now. It's at a certain age, it's time you, you need to start paying a penalty. The Lord need to start sending a wrath on you. Yeah, I understand. Grace and mercy and all that ain't nobody perfect. But listen, this God daughter that you're doing like this. And Lord, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, put a hedge of protection around them, them, them girls. This woman and her daughters, Lord, in the name of Jesus, put a hedge of protection from Satan minions out here doing the work of the devil. This right here, this woman was, was minding her own business. And then here you come, knight in shining armor. Seven years you plotted on this woman. And then you're going to get her, and you're going to get her one year apiece? All the pain you done seen her go through? Got three daughters, single mom, working a full-time job, and you're going to get this woman one year apiece? And then you're going to flip the script, isolate her from her family, move into your family regular house, and then... You got her paying all the bills at the house, and then you going and shopping for half of the girl. I just cannot get over this. I cannot get over this. And then y'all had a nerve to ask me, well, Tony, why you help the women? Why you coach women? What, do you see what they're going through? You see what they got to deal with? You see what they got to deal with? There ain't no men writing me dealing with the equal side of this from a woman. Ain't no men writing me with that. And some of y'all, oh, I know men. All right, tell them to write me then. Tell them to write me. Tell them to send an email in so we can balance the scales. We can't balance the scales because I'm out here. I'm in the trenches. I'm seeing it. The scales ain't balanced. Men doing more dirt at a higher clip. And I know y'all alpha males and mint towels and red pills want to feel good about getting toe up from the flow up by women. And you want to have a sob story that, oh, women ain't no good. But no, I'm out here. I'm seeing what's going on. I'm on ground level. I'm in the trenches, beneath the ground, looking around. I'm out here. And it's us men that's doing the dirt. Doing the dirt. Yeah, some women ain't right, but it's not equal. It's not equal. It's not an equal amount of no good women as it is to no good men. And it's more women in the world than men. So that ought to tell you something. If it's more women in the world than men, and it's more no good men than it is no good women, that ought to tell you something. That men need to get right. That we need to get closer to God. Need to know the Lord. And listen. And she say, is this the devil playing game? Absolutely he playing games. So you better get to know Jesus. And you better get gone. You better go on about your business. Point blank, period. Get both of the t-shirts when you get out on your own and get your money back up. For now, you need to be putting all your money to a savings account. Listen here, sister. This right here, this not no marriage. This ain't no marriage. Go to the bank. Go to the bank. Yes, you got the right to do this. Go to the bank. Get your own bank account. Get your own bank account. And you have your money direct deposited in your bank account. You get a bare minimum to this here house. To be honest with you, sister, don't even, if your credit good right now and you need to get gone, and you get paid enough for them next two checks. If you don't spend no money on no rent and all of that, 
that you could put that them next two check down on first and last month rent on an apartment, you get an apartment. It ain't got to be the world's greatest apartment. It need to be decent. Now you don't need you don't want to be living next to no bases and you know crackheads, but it need to be decent now. But get you an apartment and and, and listen. He if he this type of man he'll 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 pay the bill. He'll pay the bill. He don't he don't want no eviction on his credit. He'll pay the bills, and that's as a man he need to be paying the bills, and he deserved to be stuck with these bills to be left with every one of these bills. For the shammery he done pulled on you. And I, and that ain't even a word, but we finna use it right there. For the shammery he done pulled on you. He need to be stuck with them bills. And you take your next two or three or four paychecks, whatever it take, the first and last month's rent. And if y'all got to sleep on our beds, y'all going to sleep in peace. And you go get an apartment where he at work. And he don't know where the apartment at. You hear me? And... You could put the lights and water in one of your, your daughter's name. So he ain't even got to be on your name. He tried to look you up. He can't even find it. Have, have one of your coworkers, a homegirl, or one of these foundations. Or just do lights and water. You ain't got to do cable yet. Do the internet. And y'all can watch Netflix and just YouTube. Just watch these videos on YouTube. Do what you got to do, sister. Do what you got to do. Sit down. And I'm going to tell you this. Sit down and talk to God. In the peace and the quiet and the still of the night. See, I'm just kind of talking right now, so this ain't no concrete plan. But when you sit down, everybody's situation different. So one woman plan is not going to be your plan. So when you sit down and you let your mind just be ministered to and say, God, show me the way, Lord. Show me the, the, the yellow brick road, Lord. Show me, illuminate the path that I need to take to get out of this hill situation because this is not of you. I was deceived by a demon, Lord. Lord, free me. Relinquish, release me from this here bondage, Lord. I listen to my flesh instead of you, Lord. And, and, and just lay there. And if you just lay there, just lay there. It might be 30 minutes. It might be an hour. It might be four hours. You might stay up that night and be tired the next day at work. But but the Lord going to minister to you and he going to show you a way of escape. He going to show you how to leave, when to leave. He going to show you how to save. Matter of fact, might even send a blessing to you. Might even send a blessing to you. Somebody might just drop some money on you. Somebody might just sow into your life. You hear me? If I had that kind of nonprofit foundation, which I talked about starting, but then... I just ain't had the time to vet all the people that was writing in and I just, oh my goodness. And it's, it'll be, it'll be just my, the way I pick an undercover demon. And I got her executive director of the nonprofit and come to find out she worked for the devil. I ain't still coming because I was too busy focus on other stuff. So that's why I ain't start that nonprofit I mentioned because I just the alignment, and my wife said to me, she said, all right, now listen, you can end up working with some folks that end up crazy, and now, now you put your name on stuff, and stuff go, so listen, you, get, you got to trust God to send somebody who ain't got no brand, and all that to lose, but God going to send somebody, might be a foundation right there in your city, but listen to me now, he going to illuminate the path, and you're going to see the way. It's going to be like the lights right down beside the road. You're going to see the way to leave and when to leave and how to leave. You're going to go on about your business. Now, this kind of man, me hearing about men and how this man is, this is one of them passive-aggressive men. This, this man is the type of man he more likely to slice your tires or steal your license plate versus busting a grape. This that kind of man right here. And so, you know... And just pray for a hedge of protection. And when you get out, if you need to get your restraining order right away out the gate first day, just for precautionary measure, the police, they there to protect and serve. A lot of them, you could call them and they'll sit outside your house. And that's just where they working from that night, just to watch, you know. And God will give you favor with one of them. They might not even, might not be in a um, jurisdiction or uh, they job duties and they might just make it they job duties. We done had police climb and get... Cats out the trees, not me personally, but I'm just saying like what we see on the TV show. So God will give you favor with who you need favor with when you need a way of escape. Because the devil going to tempt and try you, but the Bible promised that we're going to have a way of escape. So understand that. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your favor, but you got to be willing to let go. You got to be willing to let go. You're not going to be able to change the little demon. And to see, the thing about it is, the reason why I really don't believe in change for this man is because you knew him for seven years. 
you knew him for seven years. So if he saw you at your lowest, at your weakest, at your most vulnerable state, and he still could do you like this, God have mercy on his soul. God have mercy on his soul. God have mercy on his soul. Listen to me. And that's why I tell y'all, you ain't got to be vindictive. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You ain't got to be vindictive. What you, what you got to do for these kind of people, you got to pray for them. Because without your prayer of mercy, you will see them go through so... You will see them go through stuff you would not wish on your worst enemy. And, and, and that's why I just, you know, be the bigger person. Be the bigger person. This, this right here, I'm going to be honest with you, this here saddens me. It angers me. I wish y'all ain't have to go through this. I wish y'all had just foresight, you know, the wherewithal, just more wisdom than this right here. And then to have to fall for this and be lured in. And, and, and it ain't your fault because he played a good game. He played an amazing match. You hear me? This man set you all the way up. This man ain't show you no red flags. This man was amazing. So it, it, it's situations like this right here that you can't even be mad that you get played. You can't even be mad. Like, you could be mad at yourself if you saw a million red flags and you ignored them. This man right here was a, a knight in shining armor. So you can't even be mad. You got to be able to say, wow, I literally got played. And that's just one you just got to take that. Uh. You just take that on the chin, you roll with the punches, and you go on about your business. And next time, you'll, you'll, use, you'll find a couple other signs. You'll say, okay, if a man make me wait seven years, he ain't the one. Mm -mm. You're going to find some things that you ain't have time to mention in here because it's a short email. But as you really look back, you're going to see some red flags that you missed. You're going to see some red flags, even at seven years right there. You're going to see some red flags. Even him confiding in all, letting all the women confide in him, and he doing all that right there. Him playing knight and shining and armor to multiple women, and he's single as a dollar bill. Ain't no, uh-uh, uh-uh, yeah. You're going to see some red flag when you really sit down and, and spend some time with this right here. But I'm going to tell you now, this one right here, uh, now my energy done left me. I felt, I just, you know, this right here, this right here done drained me. This right here done drained me. I just feel, I just feel the, the just energy leaving my body. From just processing and feeling the, the 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 gravity and the magnitude of what you dealing with right here, because this right here, this sad right here, this right here, this, I just oh my goodness, it's like in a situation like this, you'd rather somebody, you know, just be blunt and straightforward and just I oh I'm a dog like you'd rather somebody, you know. Then old slow, then old slow, slow kill like that right there. Stringing you out, coming home playing mind games. It, absolutely, he playing mind games. You know why he playing mind games? Because he's weak. He's weak and he's insecure. He's broken and he's lost. So he is wise in his own conceit. So he think he's so smart. He think he's so deep. He think he's so wise. He, he, women like you have told him his mind <laughs> is extraordinary. He done heard that so much he believe his own hype. So now he using his mind to manipulate you. So now he sees you as a rat in his maze that he has created. And you searching for the cheese, but you keep running into the wall. And when you eventually find the cheese, it's a rat trap. It's going to kill you. That's the game he playing with you. This is a vicious game. This is a lifetime movie. Somebody bless me with $250,000. I'm going to do a movie on this man right here. On the men that play a Move and play a game like this. I got a production company in LA, produce movies for two hundred fifty thousand, and we're gonna put it on Netflix. And I'm just gonna play out how these type of men play. Show you how these type of men right here play. Tyler Perry, give him a call. One of y'all work at Perry Studios.
Y'all tell Tyler Perry, hey, it's a guy named Tony Gaskin, life coach, got a lot of stories, could be a great consultant, want to do a film with you. And he'll put up some of his own money, pay for the studio, all that right there. Tyler Perry, give him a call. Give him a call. He'll help you out with some of those scripts. This right here, oh, man. And then watch now. Somebody wrote for Tyler Perry, we're finna tell Tyler Perry, and then watch. Y'all finna see his next three, four, five movie gonna be from my talks with Tony, and he ain't gonna give me no call and give me no little cut. To help produce it. Come on now, Tyler. Don't, 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 don't. Come on now. Black man, a black man. Don't do me like that now. Nah. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like, don't do me like that, Tyler. Give him a call. Give him a call. Give him a call. Now, nah, I can't play his role because I can't get typecast now. Nah. I, I need to play something. Now, I got to play the good guy like Denzel in all the movies. I got to be the good guy like Denzel in all the movies. So, listen to me, man. This right here, this sad. It's like, oh, man. It's like you either laugh or you going to cry. One or the other. But, sister, I feel bad for you. But, but at the same time, you're going to have to put your big draws on, your adult size, dependables. You're going to have to put them on. And you're going to have to wise up. And you're going to have to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're a grown woman now. You're a grown woman. You know right from wrong now. If you didn't know, now you know. Now it has been illuminated for you. Now you know. Now you know. You got sense. You got sense. Don't play dumb no more. Don't play weak and gullible no more. It's time to stand up for yourself and love yourself. It's time to get going. It's time to get going. Go on about your business. It's time to get going. Ain't no more excuses. From this day forward, you do not have another excuse to play the fool. Because it has been exposed and illuminated for you. Not another day in your life can you play the fool going forward. Up until today, you could have played the fool and you've been doing so with this here fool of a man for the last nine years or seven years, whichever one it's been. But now, you know better. So now, you got to do better. And that's the every woman listening and watching this. I got to get going because that first video with my son was about six minutes and this one at 51, so I got to go. Hey, God bless y'all. We'll talk soon.